Now that you have a solid feel for the compositions and styling techniques you love, let's move on to step two of building your photo formula. In this step, you'll learn how you like to light those beautiful scenes you created during the last step. Lighting can be one of the biggest struggles in surface-based photography because it isn't intuitive. It's hands down the topic I get asked about most. Plus, there are infinite videos out there and infinite types of lighting equipment you could buy. In this course, we're distilling all of that down to what you need to know to create photos that sell your product, get the viewer to make your recipe, or share the hobby you love. So in this lesson, we're talking about shadows and highlights, the difference between hard and soft light, and how to find your best natural light. When it comes to lighting surface-based photos, there are three things we want to control. Exposure, shadows, and highlights. Exposure is controlled by how intense your light is and how much you let into your camera. It's controlled by aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, and we'll talk about it in the shooting step. Shadows occur where light is partially or completely blocked by an object. They're the darkest parts of your photo. We control the look of shadows by altering the quality of our light with light modifiers like diffusers and reflectors. We control the shape of shadows by changing the direction of light. Highlights are the opposite of shadows. They're the brightest areas of your photo. Highlights occur where light hits your scene most directly. We control where highlights appear on objects by changing the direction of light or by changing the position of objects so that the light hits them in different spots. Before we can control the light source to create the shadows and highlights we want, we need to assess the quality of our light and its direction. Quality doesn't mean whether the light is good or bad. It means assessing whether the light is hard or soft. Hard light sources create crisp shadows with a sharp transition between the shadow and its background. In other words, you could easily trace the shadow's border with a pencil. Soft light sources create soft shadows with a gradual transition between the shadow and the background. With soft light, the shadow blends smoothly into the background and you'd have a hard time tracing its exact borders. Size and distance determine whether a light source is soft or hard. Small light sources, like a ring light or a phone camera flash, create hard light. They concentrate a quantity of light over a small area. Large sources, like big windows or big artificial soft boxes, create soft light because they disperse that quantity of light over a greater area. And by the way, this is a soft box. I don't mean these things, which are generally called light boxes. Distance also plays a role. Distant light sources create harder shadows, while close light sources create softer ones. So to achieve soft shadows, place your photo setup right next to the window. To create harder shadows, move the setup further from the window. Since this isn't intuitive, you can prove it to yourself by playing shadow puppets. Just hold your fingers about six inches in front of a wall, then use the flashlight of your phone to cast a shadow. Keeping your fingers still, move the flashlight to change the distance between the light and your fingers. The farther away you move the light, the harder and the smaller the shadow gets. Anytime this concept gets muddy in my brain, I do shadow puppets again to solidify it, so feel free to do the same. Here's where it gets tricky though. Knowing that large light sources create soft shadows, you'd expect the sun to create soft shadows. But on bright, cloudless days, direct sunlight creates hard shadows because the sun is so far away. On cloudy days, the same sun will create soft shadows. This is because the clouds act like a diffuser, which spreads the light over an even larger area. Shadows can be softened even further with a reflector, which adds light to the far end of your scene. So to summarize, soft light is close, large, and reflected. To make a small light source larger, we can diffuse it. Hard light sources are the opposite, far away, small, and not reflected. Hard light creates hard, well-defined shadows, while soft light creates soft, even shadows. The awesome thing is that neither type of shadow is good or bad. It just depends on the look you're going for, subtle or dramatic. I'll show you how to achieve both in the next lesson. So that's quality. The other characteristic we need to assess is direction. Where is the light positioned in relation to your subject? Where on your subject is the light hitting it to create highlights, the bright spots? And where are the shadows falling? Really looking for these things will help you with prop positioning. Do you need to rotate an object so the highlight falls in a better place? Do you need to swap object positions because a long shadow is falling on top of a short object? That kind of thing. When it comes to surface-based photography, side lighting is my direction of choice. This means placing your setup so that the light hits your subject from the right or the left side. 
I prefer side lighting because it allows you to use a two surface setup and easily position a reflector to modify your shadows. It also prevents your body from casting a shadow on your scene. The downside is that your scene will be slightly brighter along the side next to the light. The good news is that we can take care of that with reflectors, flags, and a little editing if necessary. So we've decided on side lighting. Now you just need to decide whether you want the light source on the left or the right. To decide that, consider where your shadows will land. If you're shooting objects of different heights, you'll want to make sure a shadow from a tall object isn't landing on a short object and obscuring it. In this photo, you can tell the light source is on the right because the shadows are landing on the left. If you don't like that look, flip your setup so the window is along the left. Notice how the lavender in the dish is no longer shadowed by the bottle. If you can't flip your setup because of studio limitations, just swap the object positions. Again, the lavender in the dish is no longer shadowed by the bottle. Changing the angle of your light will also change the shadows. When your light is level with your scene, the shadows will be longer, like your shadow on the ground at the end of the day when the sun is low in the sky. When you raise your light and angle it downward, the shadows shorten, like your shadow gets on the ground in the late morning or early afternoon. If using window light, you can get a similar effect by lowering your scene, for example, off a table and onto the floor. Once you feel good about side lighting, feel free to try other directions like front and angle to see what you think. It never hurts to take a ton of photos while making small changes to angle and direction and really assessing the shadows and the highlights that occur. It's one of those times that the best way to learn what you like isn't from me, but by playing around. So now that we understand shadows and how they're affected by the quality and direction of your light, let's talk about the first type of light to try and maybe the only type you ever use, natural light. Natural light is the natural choice because it's free and most of us have access to a window. The downsides are that it's unpredictable and it changes with the season, time of day, weather, and more. But there are things we can control. The direction of the window we choose, the time of day we choose to shoot, and whether we use light modifiers. First, think about the windows in your home. Which directions do they face? If you aren't sure, use the Compass app on your phone. The sun rises in the east and it sets in the west. So this means that east facing windows get direct light in the morning and west facing windows get direct light in the afternoon. Remember that direct light is small light because it's focused straight into your window rather than diffused throughout the sky. So you're more likely to get hard shadows at those times. On the other hand, north or south facing windows are less likely to get direct sunlight. So the light is usually softer and so are the shadows they create. With that said, the sun's position in the sky changes throughout the year, so your windows may not follow these rules exactly, depending on their size, their position, and the time of the year. For example, a south-facing window may get direct light in the winter due to the sun's lower position in the sky. The time of day also plays a major role in the look of your natural light, and there is no universal best time to shoot. Your best time to shoot is unique to your conditions and depends on your window size, window direction, the weather, and your preferences when it comes to hard versus soft shadows. To find the times that are best for you, set up your surfaces with a window along the right or left. Then set up a scene using objects of different heights. The scene you used for the diagonal composition is a great choice since it has the right amount of complexity to really see the shadows change. If you're able to shoot at any time of day, stand in the same position in front of your scene and take a photo every hour between about 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. If you can only shoot in the mornings or in the evenings or during a particular window of time, take a photo every hour during that period. We all have a lot of responsibilities and eight to five may not be doable. The point of the exercise is to better understand the light that you do have. If you have a tripod, even better, since the field of view will be identical from photo to photo. And at the end of the session, look at your photos. Here are the ones that we took. These are all unedited to show you the natural exposure and warmth of the light. As you compare photos, try to consciously notice how the shadows and temperature change and decide which times you prefer. Temperature, by the way, refers to how warm or cool the colors are. For example, if you ever take photos in the early morning, they tend to lean blue. We'll talk more about that in the shooting step when we talk about white balance and how to keep your whites looking white. And here's another example from one of our Replica Facebook VIP members. Thanks to Noelle of Simply Vela Candle Co. for showing us just how much her light changes throughout the day. 
Since time of year also affects the look of natural light due to shorter winter days and daylight savings, it's important to redo the photo every hour test every season or whenever you notice the look of your photo starting to change. Now it's time to start building your own lighting formula by discovering your shadow preferences, your best shooting window, and your best time of day. Action items for this lesson are, gain an understanding of how distance affects the hardness of light by playing shadow puppets with a wall and the flashlight on your phone. Determine your best window and time of day by taking a photo every hour during the times you have available to shoot. Gain an understanding of how the shadows in your scene change by varying the distance and angle between your window and your scene. Develop your light assessment skills by assessing the direction and quality of natural light in the next five places you walk into. This means restaurants, stores, friends' houses, wherever. If you photograph food for restaurants, this will be especially helpful practice. If you don't, it'll still help you hone your light assessment skills.